In this video, I'm going to go over our Chapter 7 Review and Study Guide. This is over Algebraic Reasoning, and this is from the 5th grade McGraw-Hill My Math series. So on this study guide, I have listed all of our key objectives and then given a couple example problems for each objective. So the first objective is use numbers and operation symbols to write verbal phrases as numerical expressions. So basically what this means is we're going to translate uh, just regular written words into algebraic expressions. And an algebraic expression is something that has a variable, at least one number, and at least one mathematical operation, which means add, subtract, multiply, divide. So when we say three less than a number, this phrase, a number, indicates our variable. A number could be any number whatsoever. So I'm going to replace that with the variable n. You can replace it with whatever variable name you choose to use. So to find three less than a number, that means I'm going to subtract from that number. So my variable expression is a number minus three. You can always test your answer by choosing a number for n and then plugging it in. So for example, if I make n equal to 10, I'm trying to find three less than 10. And I need to check is 10 minus three, is that three less than 10? 10 minus three is seven and seven is three less than 10. I can choose another number, for example, let's make n five and ask yourself, what is three less than five? Three less than five is two. So let's plug in our expression five minus three. Yes, that does equal to two. Question number two says the product of a number and eight, just like before, a number is my variable. And in this question, our other keyword is the word product. The product refers to the answer to a multiplication problem. So to find the product of a number and eight, I'm simply gonna multiply my number by eight. I've listed some terms that you will want to make sure that you know. So the product refers to the answer to a multiplication problem. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. The sum is the answer when we add numbers. And the difference is how far apart numbers are, which is found by subtraction. The second objective is using the order of operations to evaluate expressions. Remember that the order of operations is parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division in the order that we see them, and then addition and subtraction also in the order that you see them. And our directions tell us to evaluate which means we are going to use our order of operations to find the value of each expression. On question three, I'm going to start by looking for parentheses, and I have some. So I'm going to underline the part that I'm going to do. 24 divided by 4 is 6, and now I'm going to rewrite every other term of this expression and then continue following the order of operations. So my next step is to look for any more parentheses. There aren't any, so I'm going to look for exponents, and I don't see any there. So next, I'm going to look from left to right for order for multiplication or division, and the first one I see is multiplication. 7 times 8 is 56. Again, rewrite every part of my expression, and now I'm down to one operation. 56 and 6 is 62. So the value of my expression is 62. Question four, I'll again begin with parentheses. And in this expression, I have parentheses, but I have a whole lot going on in the parentheses. So once I have gone to parentheses, I now follow all of the order of, of operations inside the parentheses. So the first thing I'll do is I'll look for more parentheses here, and there aren't any. So now I'll look for exponents, and again, there aren't any. So now I'll look for multiplication or division, whichever one comes first in order from left to right inside my original parentheses. And I have some. So the first thing I'm going to do is eight times nine, which is 72. I'm gonna rewrite every part of my expression, including the parentheses, because I haven't finished with them. Now I can go on to the next step, but I'm still on multiplication and division because I haven't checked everything in parentheses here. So I'm going to continue looking, and there's some division right there. So I'm going to underline that. 70 divided by 10 is 7. I'm rewriting all of my expression. 
And now that I have checked every part of my parentheses here for multiplication and division, I can now check it for addition or subtraction, again, in order from left to right. So I'm going to run into some addition right here. Go ahead and do that. 72 and 7 is 79. Rewrite all of my expression. I'm still in the parentheses. 79 and 7 is 86. And now I finally have gotten rid of the parentheses because I did everything inside of it. I'm down to one operation. 7 and 86 is 93. All right, so let me scroll down for our next objective, which is to generate numerical patterns and identify pattern re relationships. So I've got a, a series of figures, and it looks like they're using toothpicks to create some shapes. And it appears that what I'm doing is I'm creating right triangles. So each figure is increasing by one right triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw figure four, which should have four right triangles. One, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to count how many toothpicks are in each figure. So figure one has one, two, three. Figure two has three times two, which is six. And I probably can see a pattern now. Figure three will have three times three, and figure four will have three times four. Question six says, Carly added 14 bottle caps to her collection. She now has 54 bottle caps. Write and solve an equation to find the number of bottle caps she originally had. I'm gonna call the number of bottle caps that she originally had, I'm gonna call that C. So if we take her original bottle caps and we add the 14 that she just put in her collection, it says she now has 54. So now that I've written my equation, I'm going to solve this. To solve this, I'm going to take 14 away from both sides. And then C becomes 54 minus 14, which is 40. The next question says, Travis and his three friends go to the baseball game. Each person buys a ticket for $8, a snack for $4, and a drink for $2. Which numerical expression represents the total cost of the trip to the baseball game for Travis and his friends. So first thing is this beginning part that I highlighted right here, Travis and his three friends, that is four people. So they are each going to a baseball game and each person is spending eight dollars plus four dollars plus two dollars. So this represents the cost per person but we don't have just one person. We need to multiply this by four people. So now I need to look for an equivalent to expression to what I just wrote. And the commutative property of multiplication tells me that I can write this as the quantity eight plus four plus two times four, or four times the quantity eight plus four plus two. So B has the same value. Our next objective is to generate a rule from an input-output table. So for questions eight and nine, we're gonna determine the rule that is used to generate each output number. So in question eight, um, I, I would go straight to this part, 70 and 10, just because I think those are friendly numbers. And it looks to me like to go from 70 to 10, I either subtracted 60 or divided by seven. Now there are more complicated ways that I can do that, but those seem to be the most simple ways that I can start with 70 and end up with 10. So I'm gonna check that with my other numbers. So is 42 minus 60, is that six? And no, it's not. So subtracting 60 is now definitely out. So now I'm gonna try dividing by seven. So I need to ask myself, is 42 divided by seven? Does that equal six? Yes, and I wanna keep checking every one of these because it's possible that it is a more complicated rule and I want to make sure that the rule that I have works for everything and in this case it does so I took my input I divided by 7 and that gave me my output I could write this with a variable and say n the rule is n divided by 7 on question 9 
uh, my numbers are getting larger from the input to the output. So it's probably going to be either addition or multiplication. And I'm going to jump down right here to the 5 and 45 because either with addition or multiplication, those are fairly easy ones to do in my head. To add from 5 to 45, that would be adding 40. And if I were multiplying 5 by something to get 45, that would be times 9. So I'm going to check that with every single one of them. So go up to the top and say, is 2 plus 40 18? It's not, so adding is out. And now I'm going to check my multiplication. Is 2 times 9 18? It is. But I'm going to go ahead and check every single one to make sure that my rule is not something more complicated. When I plug that in, 5 times 9 is 45, 6 times 9 is 54, and so on. So my rule is the input times 9 equals the output with a variable that would be n times 9. On the second page, our first objective is identify and extend patterns and sequences. So we're going to find the next three terms in each sequence. On question number 10, it appears that my sequence is getting larger. So it's probably going to be either addition or multiplication. Because these have decimals, I'm going to start with checking for addition because that will be easier. So for the, from the first number to the second number right there, from 7 and 3 tenths to 9 and 4 tenths, I'm going to figure out how far apart that is, which means I'm going to subtract. And it looks like it's 2 and 1 tenth apart. So I'm going to see if we have the same distance apart from our second to our third number, which means, again, I'm going to subtract. And it appears that I do. I have the same distance. So I've figured out the rule. I'm increasing every time by 2 and 1 tenth. That is my rule, increasing by 2 and 1 tenth every time. So to find my next number in the pattern, I need to just keep following that same rule. So I'm going to have 11 and 5 tenths, and I'm going to add 2 and 1 tenth. So 13 and 6 tenths, and I'm going to just continue that. Add 2 and 1 tenth. 15 and 7 tenths. And you actually can, can, if you look for it, you can see a pattern within the digits here that our 1's place is increasing by 2, and the 10th place is increasing by 1, which makes sense because we're adding 2 holes and 1 tenth each time. For question 11, I'm going to pull in a place value chart because it looks a little bit different than our previous one in that the, the number that is in our sequence, or, or at least the digit that's in our, one of the digits that's in our sequence is remaining the same. I see a 3 in every single number in the sequence. So I'm going to fill in this place value chart and let's see what's happening to the 3. So the first number is 0 and 3 hundredths. Our second number is 0 and 3 tenths. Then we have 3 holes. And if you look at what's happening to this 3, it appears that the 3 is going from the hundredths to the tenths to the ones place. It's just shifting one place to the left every time. And when we move a digit one place to the left, we're multiplying that number by 10. So if we continue that pattern, the 3 will shift over here, meaning it's multiplying by 10. 3 times 10 is 30. And if we continue that pattern, it goes to the hundreds place and then to the thousands place. The next objective is to uh, identify and graph points on a coordinate plane. And we're going to use the grid at the right to answer our questions. First of all, remember on a coordinate plane, your horizontal axis is the x-axis. The vertical axis is the y-axis. And when we're writing ordered pairs, we always start with the horizontal and then go to the vertical. So it says name the coordinates for point D. We're going to go over on the x-axis to over over here to 3. And then we're going to go down to negative 1. So we are at positive 3, negative 1. The coordinates for point A are going over to the left, negative 2, and then up, positive 3. So we went negative 2, comma 3. Question 14 says, what point is 2 units west and 4 units south of the origin? So this right here is the origin. It's point 0, comma 0. So we want to go 2 units to the west, which is to the left. 
And then we want to go four units to the south, which is down one, two, three, four, and it looks like we are ending on point E. Our next objective is to use a rule, table, or graph to solve problems. So on question 15, it says Chantel is planning a trip to drive across the country. Her car uses one gallon of gasoline for every 24 miles. So we have a rule that the distance that she's able to drive is 24 miles times the number of gallons of gasoline. So our first task is to fill out the table and the uh, input number is our gallons of gasoline and then our output is the distance after we've applied the rule. So the first one we're going to do 24 times 1 is 24 and the second one we're going to do 24 times 4 and I'll do that out to the side here which is 96 miles and our third one, we have the output, but we don't know the input. We know the, the distance driven. So I know 168 equals 24 times whatever the input is, g. To solve for this, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. I'm going to do 168, and I'm going to divide by 24. This is where you either need to do some side multiplication or make a list of 24s, a, a small little multiplication chart for 24s. Uh, considering that 4 times 24 was 96, it looks like I'm maybe a couple 24s more than that, maybe three 24s more than that. So out to the side, I'm going to do 24 times 6 and see if I get there. And that's 144, so it looks like it's maybe one more. Let's try 24 times 7. And it is, it's 168 with no remainder. So my gallons of gasoline is 7 there. And then I need to do 24 times 13. Again, I'll do that out to the side here. 4 times 3 is 12. Let's see, 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. So it looks like I have 312 miles. Now that I've completed my table, I'm going to go ahead and make my graph. And this graph is going to show the distance that Chantel is able to drive uh, for different amounts of gallons of gasoline. So let's look at the graph and along the x-axis, which is this bottom axis, it appears that it's counting each of these little squares. We're counting by 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And along the y-axis, this axis, it looks like we're counting by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yes. So when I graph this, my ordered pairs are 1, 24. So right here, 1. And then 24 is not going to be exact. 24 is somewhere right in here. So I'm going to go up to right about there, 1, 24. My next one is 4, 96. So 4 is right here. And this is 90 right here, so 96 is a little bit higher, so right about there. Then I have 7, 168. Here's 7. And 168 is, let's see, 110, 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So it's a little bit below the last tick mark that I made there. So I'm going to go over 7 up to 168 appears to be right about there and then I have 13 comma 312 here's 13 and 312 is a little bit above 310 so it looks like it's right about there so I can now use a line to connect my dots to see the rate of change here and it appears that as Chanel uses more gasoline, she's able to travel a longer distance. Question 6 says plot a point to show the distance the car would travel on 6 gallons of gasoline, and how many miles would that be? So 6 miles, or 6 gallons rather, would be right here, which is right about here on my graph. I wouldn't use the graph though to figure out the exact number of miles because my graph is not exact. First of all, it's really tiny. And secondly, that line, I just approximated it through each of my points. It may not be perfect. 
So to make sure I have an exact answer, I'm going to use a rule, which was distance equals 24 times the number of gallons, which in this case is 6. And I've actually already done this problem right up here, right here. So I know my distance is going to be 144 miles. The next objective is to evaluate whether an equation or an inequality is true or false. And we're going to evaluate them for n equals 8. So to do that, I'm just going to plug in n as 8. And both of these in, on questions 17 and 18. And I'm going to check whether these are true or false statements. So 8 plus 3 and 4 tenths. I'm going to line up my 1's places. This will then have a 0 in the tenths. And it looks like, yes, it is 11.4. So that is a true statement. Question 18, I'm going to plug in 8 for n. 8 minus 3 equals 5. And 5 is not greater than 5. 5 is equal to 5. So this inequality is false. Next, I'm going to evaluate variable expressions. And for both of these, I'm going to again use the order of operations, but I'm going to evaluate them for n equals 4. On question 19, it says 2n plus 1. And this right here, 2n, means I have two n's. So I can either think of that as n plus n plus 1, or I can think of that as 2 times n plus 1. Either way, I'm going to plug in 4 for n. So I can plug in a 4 here for n. So that, now I have 4 plus 4 plus 1, which is 9, or 2 times 4 plus 1, which is also 9. The last one, I have n divided by 3. I'll plug in 4 for n, which gives me 4 divided by 3. I'm going to go ahead and do that division. 3 goes into 4 one time with one remainder, and I'm going to write that remainder as a fraction. So my answer is 1 and 1 third.